guys, today we are going to be doing yet another review on another neck knife, and this little guy here is the Anza Bumblebee. Today we are going to be talking about this guy, and as always, before we get into this, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan bushcraft reviews, EDC, and all that kind of fun stuff. And now, without any further ado, let's jump into this a tiny review. Following suit with tiny little neck knives, things like the Browse Blade Silent Soldier and the TRC Mini. This is the Anza Bumblebee, and it is another very tiny little neck knife, but this is actually one of my dedicated woods neck knives. And immediately when I got it, I knew that that was one of the primary purpose I, purposes I wanted this neck knife to have. And that is because of a few reasons. One, it, it, it would probably do quite well in EDC, but I think for the fact that this is 1095 and the overall handle thickness, it lends its hands better to ED, or sorry, bushcraft. And that is very truthful, at least in my use of this knife in bushcrafting setting, or in the bushcrafting setting. And this guy is a knife that I turn to when I want a really minimalistic and very compact uh, bushcrafting knife that's also very comfortable and very capable. This guy can do and does an impressive job at everything from doing wood carving tasks like this to doing feather sticks, batoning smaller pieces of wood. Of course this is a full tang knife as I hope you guys can see there and <clears throat> it does also a very impressive job at doing things like you'd expect skinning and caping. This little guy is very agile and very maneuverable so it's very good at being able to go around and maneuver through bones and around skin and hide. It's very good at doing that. It's also very good at, like I said, carving notches because of the way this is a hollow ground. It's a pretty high hollow ground uh, blade. It does a very good job at really biting into wood and uh, just overall biting into things. It's a very, very bitey, kind of slicey knife. So it's, once again, not too good. Well, I mean, it would certainly be good for EDC, but I really like this uh, for bushcraft. Another reason I favor it in bushcraft is because of the way the uh, neck knife uh, sheath sits. So as opposed to what my EDC neck knife is for right now. And once again, I keep these kind of swapped up, but just the pull force November one, mixing it up today, you guys can see here, pull force pulls from the bottom. And that is generally what I like in my EDC neck knives is to pull from the bottom, but this guy pulls from the top. So it's, it lends its hand better to bushcrafting in that regard too. So as far as the steel goes, this is 1095, uh, made out of files, of course, that's kind of Anza's thing. So it does a great job with uh, re edge retention. I've had no issues, it performs just like you'd expect good 1095 to perform. Of course, these are heat reheat treated by Anza, so they get these files in, they take off whatever heat treat they have, and then they reheat treat them so that they have a better knife steel heat treat. Um, <coughs> actually had a long discussion with the owner of Anza about what kind of differentiates them in that regard. Now, of course, the Bumblebee is named the Bumblebee, kind of for the reason, if you guys can notice here, it has some striping in the micarta. These are gray and tan micarta scales, but they're gray here, and then they're kind of striped with some tan canvas micarta and that really helps it to kind of pop and I kind of actually like it and then of course it has this area removed for kind of acting like that stinger but even with that removed it actually is still insanely comfortable I have to say that another reason why this so fastly became one of my bushcrafting knives or one of my bushcrafting uh, neck knives was just because it's so comfortable to just sit here and just work on a piece of wood even for this knife being really small it fills the hand because the handle as you guys can see there is actually decently thick it fills the hand very comfortably the way that the kind of buoy styled blade here is cut the hand is very comfortable or the thumb is either comfortable here holding it just in a normal kind of hammer grip like this or just kind of choked back like this or even choked up like this it's all very comfortable the transition lines are very easy so 
like I said, it's just a really relaxing knife to just kind of sit there and just work on a piece of wood like this. In fact, I actually took my good time, uh, you know, just carving these out for you guys just so I could kind of play with it. And honestly, like I said, it's just a comfortable knife to hold and just kind of handle like this and just overall do tasks. So very comfortable knife for being so small and so tiny. But then, like I said, uh, especially with this sheath, it really just disappears. You guys can see how compact this thing just kind of stows and it just sits right there. So it really disappears on the neck. It's not that heavy at all. Now I will say it is a little bit heavier than some of my really like the TRC Mini or the Frost Blade Silent Soldier. It's heavier than both of those because of the thick micarta scales, but it's just insane because this is a really neat knife. And honestly, I'm stoked because it's rare that I find such tiny little knives like these that work so well for bushcrafting. Generally in the bushcraft game, you will have to end up rolling out with some bigger knives like what I have on my belt here. It's the Topps Fieldcraft, which the Topps Fieldcraft is a great knife, but in all honesty, for those smaller kind of tasks, that you need a more agile and capable blade. This really works well. So fast became one of my neck carries for the outdoors. Anyways, guys, that's all I have to say about the Anza Bumblebee. And as always, God bless, and I'm out.